For the first time since the 2002 model year, Honda is selling its mid-size Passport, only this time it actually decided to build it. You see, the last time the Passport was on sale in the United States, it was actually a rebadged Isuzu Trooper. Honda has looked around the SUV market and decided that, hey, we don't have a two-row mid-size SUV and we're missing a gap between our three-row pilot and our compact CRV. And thus, the Honda Passport was born. They took the larger pilot, cut a little bit off of the overall length, got rid of that third row seat. So this is strictly a two row five seat SUV, but without getting rid of all of the size and heft of that larger Passport, creating one of the largest vehicles in this mid-size SUV segment. Honda sent us an Elite trim, that's the highest trim level, with all-wheel drive to test out. You could only get the Elite trim with all-wheel drive, while front-wheel drive is available in other trim levels. Honda has also differentiated the Passport from the larger Pilot by giving it a little bit sportier styling. You can see the cool black wheels we have on on this tester. All of the Elite trim models are going to have that. It also looks a lot more rugged. You have a lot of black accents and more off-road rugged styling than the doughier looking Pilot. I think it looks great and now we're going to go ahead and get it out on the road. Straight away from behind the wheel, the Passport feels quite large. That's because it is based on the same platform as the Pilot, which is quite large. So if you're coming into this car looking for an SUV that feels compact, that feels small, that feels light and agile, this is not it. This is for the type of person who wants the feeling of being in like a large, lumbering, massive uh, SUV. That's the person who would buy this type of SUV. The steering is pretty light. It's pretty easy to negotiate. We're actually driving through a little parking lot now, but navigating in such a large vehicle, especially parking uh, slow, speeds maneuver, slow speed maneuvers is a little bit difficult. And unfortunately, Honda doesn't offer a 360 degree camera, which would help uh, make the parking a little bit easier. So the powertrain, there's only one engine option here. It's a three and a half liter VTEC V6, which I'm gonna go ahead and floor now. Ooh, it sounds good. Honda knows how to make a VTEC V6. It's a great motor. Uh, I really liked it the last time I tested it in the Acura MDX, but I think I like it even more here. It's made into a nine speed automatic, which I remember when I drove the Acura, I hated that transmission. It was clunky, didn't know what gear to be in at any given time. It still requires a couple of downshifts that aren't that quick when you mat the throttle, but I feel like Honda has done a better job tuning it recently. The Acura MDX uh, is a little bit of an older vehicle for the Honda division, and I just feel like they've done a little bit of changes to make this transmission just a little bit better. The V6 produces 280 horsepower, which is pretty good for the class, not class leading, and 262 foot-pounds of torque, which is pretty good as well. It'll tow 3,500 pounds if you get front wheel drive, but if you get all wheel drive, you can tow up to 5,000 pounds. Also, it'll do zero to 60 in about six seconds or less, which is really not bad uh, when you consider the weight uh, and how much power this car has. It does feel pretty quick. It's got stop start, which I feel like is okay. They've made a lot of changes, Honda says, to the air conditioning system on this SUV, uh, meaning that it can stay off for longer even on a hot day and the air conditioning will still run. That's a pretty interesting change that they've made. And another change with the transmission is that it can now launch in second gear. So when you come to a complete stop, the engine will do its stop start thing. And then when you go to start up again, it'll be in second gear already. So the transmission feels a little bit more smooth under those circumstances. And all of that 
really has done wonders to make the Passport feel a little more smooth in the drivetrain than other uh, Honda Acura vehicles I've tested with this same engine and drivetrain. Uh, we're now on the highway where I'm gonna talk a little bit about the safety functions because Honda has included its Honda Safety Sense suite of active safety technology as standard. That's fantastic. But the safety systems themselves, I find, are not that great. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the adaptive cruise control. Yes, this thing does have adaptive cruise control as standard, which is pretty nice uh, that Honda included that for free. But it doesn't bring you down to a stop. If you do get to low speeds, it'll deactivate, and then you better, whoa, get on those brakes. Um, and it does have lane keep assist technology. I've noticed that the system will shake the wheel a little bit if you do stray out of your lane, but it really doesn't uh keep the lane quite as well as other Honda systems I've tested, like the Honda Insight. I remember that car basically drove itself. Oh, uh, let's see if it'll do the steering. No, uh, it's gonna lane departure and I'm gonna go right over the rumble strips. So in terms of execution on the safety functions, I'm really happy that Honda did decide to include all these features as standard, but they could be executed just a little bit better. And we are driving the Elite trim of the Passport, which means we've got all the bells and whistles. So let me pull over right now and show you how those work on the inside. Moving on to the Passport's interior, I'm going to show you around the Elite trim that we have here. That is the nicest Honda Passport that you can buy for the 2020 model year. That means we have niceties like leather seats that are heated and ventilated in the front. You get a heated steering wheel. You get a wireless charger in front of the shifter, rain sensing wipers, and a few other niceties. You also get heated seats in the rear, which is pretty nice as well. We have the upgraded infotainment system, which comes on EXL trims and above, has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard. I like using Android Auto because I have an Android device. I prefer it to Honda's built-in navigation, which is of course included on this Elite trim. The shifter is Honda's push button unit. We've seen this in other cars like the Insight and the Clarity before. Push for park, pull for reverse, push again for drive. And if you push the D button again, you can put it into sport mode. That'll give you a little bit of a sportier transmission feel. We'll hold gears just a little bit longer. You can also put the car into eco mode. There's a green button to the left of the steering wheel. That'll retard the throttle a little bit to give you slightly better fuel economy. Now, Honda markets the Passport as sort of more rugged than its larger Pilot. It's got uh, some extra uh, strengthening underneath the car to make it a little more resistant to rocks and scraping and things like that. You also get a terrain select controller where you can cycle through different modes like mud or snow. We didn't really get a chance to drive it off-road during our week of testing, but this car is not going to be quite as rugged as something like a Toyota 4Runner, but it will be a lot uh, better off-road than something like a Chevy Blazer or a Ford Edge. Now let's go ahead and check out the back seat where the Honda Passport really thrives. Okay, so back here you've got 39.6 inches of rear, rear legroom that's tied with the Chevy Blazer, which has a very spacious back seat. It's only slightly less than what you'll get from the Ford Edge, but these seats do slide and recline, making it extremely comfortable for all of your passengers. And of course, this is only a five seat vehicle. You can't get seven for that. You'll have to step up to the larger pilot. Now, the benefit of that not having a third row is that the cargo area is absolutely massive. In the cargo area, we have 41.2 cubic feet behind the second row. Again, massive. You can fit all your stuff back there. But of course, you can open it up by folding down the second row. So it, there are buttons mounted on the sides. And if you push them, the rear seats automatically drop down. It's super easy to do. One of the best in the entire segment. That's going to open it up to 77.9 cubic feet of storage, which is a class leader. No two row midsize SUV in this segment is going to have more than that. And if that's not enough, you do get some extra storage underneath the floor, which does not sacrifice the spare tire. Honda really has thought of everything, making this Passport 
among the most practical vehicles in its segment. It's absolutely fantastic for cargo hauling duties. All right, so let's price out our 2020 Honda Passport. Not too hard to do because there's only four trim levels and you can add all wheel drive to any of them for an additional $2,000. Now the base sport trim is gonna set you back $31,990 or $33,990 for all wheel drive. Comes very well equipped though with 20 inch alloy wheels, black cloth upholstery, LED headlights, tri-zone climate control, keyless entry, Honda sensing, a five inch infotainment system and remote engine start. Now the EXL trim upgrades to 36,410 or 38,410. This is the best bang for your buck trim. I think keeps you under $40,000, but adds leather, a heated power adjustable front seats, a power sunroof, power tailgate, blind spot monitoring, an upgraded eight inch infotainment system and rear sunshades. The touring trim is a bit more luxurious, costs $39,280 or $41,280 with all wheel drive. That adds heated rear seats, a 10 speaker sound system, hands-free lift gate, navigation, a 15 volt power socket, roof rails, front and rear parking sensors, and power folding mirrors. Finally, the Elite trim that we tested only comes in all-wheel drive for $43,780. That adds ventilated front seats, a heated steering wheel, wireless charging, rain-sensing wipers, and gloss black accents throughout. So that was Honda's Passport. I really like it. I like the way it looks. I like the way it drives. I think it has a pretty strong powertrain. The one thing that I wish Honda would improve upon is their safety technology. I've seen Honda do it better, so there's no excuse as to why this Passport doesn't have the absolute best of Honda safety technology. That being said, all that safety technology does come as standard, making this an absolutely great value. This Eat trim that we're driving is only about $44,000, making it about four or $5,000 less than the Chevy Blazer I tested and loved. Making this such a good value, it's also huge. The back seat's gigantic, the trunk's gigantic, so you can just do so many things with it. And that's why I'm going to be giving the 2020 Honda Passport a car buzz score of must buy. And if you liked this review and you'd like to see more, be sure to subscribe to the CarBuzz YouTube channel and hit the notification bell to be alerted of all of our latest videos. And if you wanna keep up with the latest and greatest in news for the automotive sector, be sure to download the CarBuzz app on iOS and Android. That's where we post daily content for you to enjoy. Hope you've enjoyed this video. See you next time.